all the things you need to pay attention to. But there might be something missing. You think you're prepared. You have a great opening statement. You have a great body. You have a great conclusion for your speech, but there's a secret ingredient that you might not have. Big Mac has secret sauce. Kentucky Fried Chicken has a secret chicken recipe. And every Toastmaster speech should have a good introduction. And this is the introduction. I'm not talking about your introduction for your speech. I'm talking about how you are introduced as a speaker. So today, fellow Toastmasters, I'm going to talk about why every speech you give, no matter where it is, you should be introduced as a speaker. I'm going to talk about, number one, what an introduction is. Number two, why every speech should have an introduction. Number three, some tips for making sure you as a speaker are always introduced properly. And number four, what to do if you are the introducer. Because if you continue in public speaking, you may not be the speaker. You may be introducing other speakers. So some tips on that. So first, what is an introduction? Anyone? A little bit. Okay. Okay. A place to start. Place to start. Teaser. Okay. Highlights. All those things. Essentially, though, an introduction is a speech. Very short speech. It has a purpose. Is a little buddy, little, little intro, and a little conclusion. So essentially, a introduction is a speech. Now, why should you have an introduction? Well, there are five big reasons you should have an introduction. <laughs> Number one is it makes a transition. As, as well as everyone in the audience may know a speaker, the speaker needs to separate himself from being an audience member to becoming the role of the speaker and leading the group in its thinking. And the intro that you get was one of the things that serves to make you into the speaker, especially if you're you know, sitting in the audience, you're a, an audience member. As soon as you walk to the front of the room and you turn around and face those thousands of eyeballs, you are now a speaker. So the introduction helps make a transition between you as an audience member and you as a speaker, or if someone's just coming on stage. That's one of the things that it does. The second big thing, and this is alluded to, it helps establish the audience expectations. Huh? Basically, what is the speaker going to talk about? What, what can the audience expect? Are they going to be subjected to a humorous speech? Are they going to be informed? Are they going to be entertained? Are they going to be persuaded? So the, the introduction serves as a little teaser little taste of what is coming up in the speech. And an audience is much more appreciative and receptive to your speech if they know what you're going to speak about in general terms. You don't want to give away the entire speech in your introduction. Third, whoops, that's not third. Third, gives credibility to the speaker. The audience wants to know why this speaker, why this material, why now? Who is this person? You know, why are they speaking to us on this subject? And it may have to do with your special knowledge, a personal experience, credentials, whatever it is. It's always nice to let the audience know what brings you there, why you, to speak about this particular topic. Fourth reason why you should prepare an introduction for every speech you give is it builds a bridge. Basically, it sets the tone for your upcoming speech. When the audience, you don't know where the audience's frame of mind is. They may have just heard a very, very technical speech or some other speaker talking about subject XYZ. 
Your speech may be totally different from that. So you, you use the introduction to bring the audience's frame of mind from where it is presently to where you want it at the end of your speech. So that's the fourth thing that a in good introduction does for a speaker. And last, part of being prepared. As I mentioned, you spend a lot of time creating your speech. You owe it to yourself to make sure you are introduced properly as a speaker. You don't want to ever just let the introducer do whatever they want if you're the speaker because you might get introduced completely wrong. For example, we say, well, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is is Lisa, uh, Lisa uh, Gilbert, that's right, Lisa Gilbert from up there in, in Oregon and she is a, uh, what is she, she's an uh, insurance agent, that's right, she's an insurance agent and she's going to be here to talk to us today about the reason you should do some financial planning and get insurance now because you can't get it later because you'll probably be dead. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lisa Gilbert. Okay, so I mean that, I have heard introductions where the speaker just or the introducer didn't get a good introduction and you wouldn't believe the weird things that happen that will come out of the mouth of an introducer if they don't know what to say. So as part of being prepared make sure you supply your introducer with an introduction. So on that note tips for making sure you are introduced properly. Number one, write out, print out your introduction in big fat letters and hand it physically to your introducer, like I did. Okay. Better yet, email it to the introducer two days, a week, whatever, before you're going to speak. Right. Number three, print out another copy of your introduction and put it in your pocket. Because from the time that you hand your introduction to the introducer and the time you give your speech, anything could happen. They might get a phone call saying they need to go to the hospital, there's an emergency, and they take off with your introduction. So someone else is going to introduce you and they won't have your introduction. So you pull it out of your pocket, hand it to them. Always be prepared to make sure you have a good introduction. Now, this, what I've been talking about is being proactive on your part as a speaker to make sure you have an introduction. What if you are the introducer? Well, there are some things you need to keep in mind. Number one, when you introduce someone, it's not the time for you to show how funny and creative you are. All eyes should be on the speaker. So you want to give the speaker center stage. Also, you want to make sure as part of your preparation as an introducer, you get introductions from all the speakers. So it's part of your role as you know, running the, you being the MC or whatever, to get introductions from all the speakers if they don't give them to you. And your introduction should have the goal of the speaker's speech, their credibility, that type of thing. And lastly, it should be, or second to last, you need to as an introducer, sometimes do transitions. This is kind of an off-the-cuff, impromptu thing. For example, if Tom has just given a very funny speech about football and drinking beer and having a good time, and the next speaker is going to speak about something very somber, very poignant, death in the family, whatever, you as the introducer need to make a transition between what the audience is feeling at the moment and the next speaker. So even though you've received an introduction, you need to modify it. Lastly, you need to be brief with your introductions. So that is a bit on introductions. So in conclusion, remember that every speech should have a good introduction and the secret ingredient is a good introduction. Fellow Toastmasters.